How's it going guys? Our Triple XC, aka the Raging Cajun here, and uh, we're back for our second little video on our little second stint of YouTube that we're running into right now. Um, and I wanted to do something a little different than what I'm normally used to doing here on the channel. Um, and we'll try it out, see if it works, I don't know. It's a new it's a new life here on the channel, so we gotta see what works, right? I wanted to kind of like dive into like a certain topic every now and then, or like a, set, a certain deck and kind of see what's out there. Uh, and if you watched the video before this, or a little comeback video, we are currently in the process of building our decks because we just had a uh, pre-release for set five, BT5. Um, and there's a couple decks that interested us. That's kind of what I was doing in the last video was talking about what interested us. Interested? There's the English that I can't speak again. Anyway, this video, you can see by the title, I want to uh, dive into Hexablaumon because we just did some testing uh, earlier on. Didn't film any videos yet because we want to be accustomed with the decks before we like put them out there for you guys to watch us play with because we don't want to look stupid. Um, and uh, I was playing Hexablaumon and I uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, Cameron Matuska uh, kind of put together a list. Uh, I changed it a little bit. And because, because of how I changed it, I literally just dive into digimoncard.dev and just kind of type in things on the search bar, which I'll show you here in a second, and just explore what I can do. Uh, because for someone like me, I forget cards and stuff like that. I'm kind of stupid. Uh, so, uh, what I wanted to do is kind of take you on that journey because I found a lot of things that are really cool and I want to get your guys' opinion in the comments uh, on, like, what is your ideal version of the Hexa Blaumon build. So let's go ahead and hop into digimoncard.dev and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about uh, with all these different options. Alright, so here we are again. Excuse the frames with the webcam thing. I'm still working on the setup. I'm just trying to get some content out there because I'm, I've been... I've been eager to make videos recently, so ignore my face. Uh, let's talk about what's go what we got going on here. So, uh, what I did was uh, I, I played a couple games and I got used to Hexablaumon a little bit because I haven't played in a while, and this is kind of a whole new archetype of things that I haven't really been working with, and I wanted to get accustomed to what was going on. So I played a little bit of Hexablaumon. For those of you who don't know, uh, he is a 11k dp uh 12 play costs which uh haven't done yet uh but uh digivolution costs a three which is pretty okay um and then so when he's attacking you're trashing up to two digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's digimon then if your opponent has a digimon with no digivolution cards in play this digimon gets jamming um and then all turns your opponent's digimon with no digivolution cards can uh cannot attack or block um, and so this is kind of the boss monster that kind of arose in this set from all of those BT1 and starter deck cards, which were removing sources. Um, there's a couple other things that have come about, but this is like the real heavy hitter that came out. And it really interested me in that way because uh, I saw all these cards and I would see all these cards come out. And I was like, man, there's really nothing... There's no end game to this strategy, and this one really helps, uh, and it, it gives it something to do. Uh, now, it's not just this, it's also the cards that come with it, uh, which is like the Blue Komon line. Um, and Blue Komon's really cool, right? Or Bulu, Bulu Komon, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, kind of behind my head here, um, but if I can move this, there we go. Uh, so, Bulu Komon, I'm just calling him Blue Komon. Uh, he's a four cost to drop, which is warranted for how kind of good he is. Uh, 3k DP, zero cost to evolve, obviously. Um, and then on your turn, uh, when you trash a Divolu Digivolution card from one of your opponent's Digimon, you gain a memory. Um, and then he's followed up by Pale Jermon. And so when you Digivolve with Pale Jermon, uh, he's two to Digivolve and five to drop, which is good. Um, uh, trash up to two Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. So, again, you're getting rid of sources and doing stuff for Hexablaumon. Then, of course, you move into the new one, which is Chris Pelgermon. This card's really cool. Um, when you Digivolve into him for three, he's a 7k DP, uh, you trash the bottom Digivolution card of all of your opponent's Digimon. So, it's just really a source control deck, if you want to call it that, right? Um... So, when you're building the deck, uh, I didn't build it, Matuska did, Cameron did, um, he just kind of gave me the rundown, right? So he just kind of gave me the basic stuff. So we have Sora and Joe, which is a pretty cool tamer for this stuff. So at the start of your turn, they don't have any sources, uh, you get two extra memory. 
you get two of these out, it's pretty nasty, I have to say, because again, we're kind of constantly controlling uh, the lack of you know the lack of sources on our opponent's side of the field. Um, but uh, then when you attack with a blue Digimon, you can tap this and trash two Digivolution cards uh, from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Um, and so that was kind of the gist of what was happening, right? I think our list had, um, let's see, uh, no Joes. We had the uh, Gomamon um, and Gabumon that kind of dealt with the same thing down here from the starter deck. Yeah, so... Uh, Gabumon here, so when attacking, uh, trash the Digi Digivolution card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon with a level 5 or less. Doesn't really help you when they have a 6. Uh, same thing with uh, the the Gomamon promo, which isn't showing up here on uh, our uh, little search here that I put in. Uh, because I, tr I tried to narrow it down, and I think that's really all we're missing, so it's not that big of a problem. But all I did was go to DigimonCard.dev, obviously. Uh, and type in some search parameters. So I did Digivolution, so it's looking for cards that deal with Digivolution. And then um, color blue, and then the different things, you know. So I got everything, and then I sorted it. So the problem I was having was I was playing against this green deck that I think you're going to see on the channel here pretty soon. Uh, it's kind of spicy. Um, good or bad, I don't know yet. <laughs> but we went back and forth a lot and I was having a problem of no removal. Uh, we weren't playing any removal at all. Uh, the, it was just straight control. So I'm controlling you and trying to, you know, get to your security by having you not be able to do anything because I have Hex of Um, and that's great. And when it works, it's great. But there's sometimes in the deck I was playing against, I needed removal for a big thing and I didn't have any. Uh, so in my head, I was like, man, I know that there is a card that is going to delete something because it doesn't have um, Digivolution sources. It's got to just be, it, there has to be a card, right? So I couldn't really find it. And of course, um, I mean, there's cock at his breath, but I don't like sending things back to hand. I think that's kind of everyone's thing about cock at his breath at this point. Uh, but um, this is the card that came with Hexablaumon, Absolute Blast. Uh, and so it's trash the bottom Digivolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon, then return one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards at the bottom of its owner's deck. Um, so I found this, and I was like, okay, I can do this. Uh, it's a six to play, though, so I was kind of hesitant. And then I just kind of started looking through the cards that dealt with Digivolution sources, and I definitely just completely forgot about some of the cards. Uh, and this is kind of what made me want to make this video, is because there's a lot of cards in blue that deal with the Digivolution source thing that I wasn't really focused on because when I was playing Blue before, I was playing Blue Omni and ignoring all this stuff. But now that we have Hexablaumon and we can go back, it's really interesting. Um, so there's a Hearts Attack, right? So it says trash all Digivolution cards under one of your opponent's Digimon. So when you have Hexablaumon out, you're happy because everything without sources can attack or block, right? And it's kind of dead in the water. Uh, until they digivolve on top of it and hopefully if you're doing it right or they it, ideally if they don't have a tamer or anything and they're stuck you can kind of hold them to one or two so that they can't really digivolve and do anything um of course there's you know now there's you know the uh chaos mons that can have rush or haste or whatever uh and do stuff um but this card is cool because this is the, I have my Hexablaumon, and then I, I play three to kind of keep him active, right? You digivolve into something, hopefully, you, you know, ideally for the player of blue, uh, you're, you, they can't do anything after they digivolve, um, or at least don't kill Hexablaumon, and then you play something like this to get rid of that stuff. So this is three to play, and it does it to one, and then there's Howling Crusher, uh, which, again, I completely forgot about this card. This is the alt art. Um, trash all Digivolution cards under all of your opponent's Digimon. Um, and this is kind of where I want your guys' opinion on things because I haven't had a lot of testing and it, my general consensus of life is that other people are smarter than me. <laughs> so I'm asking you, the people viewing the video, uh, what do you think about Howling Crusher? I know it's a 7 to play, that's very expensive, um, but it does kind of help you with the Hexablaumon thing. Now, the one thing I'll say from the short experience I had with Hexablaumon is that there was a lot of like... Um, I'll call it redundancy, uh, to where I had everything without Digivolution sources, and then I couldn't really do anything else after that. 
Uh, I have my hexablaum on, uh, and then I just couldn't think of anything to do except kind of build up my board to the side of it. Um, and, you know, hopefully you have your uh, Chris Paildramon under him uh, so that you can kind of deal with their security stack quickly because he has, um, he gives Hexablaumon security attack plus one if they don't have Digivolution sources. Um, but yeah, so I, I found those two cards and I thought it was pretty interesting. I was going through, you have Joe, um, when you're, one of your opponent's Digivolution cards is trash, you spend his tamer gain a memory. Um, which again, I was playing the, um, the, the double tamer, uh, in hopes that, you know, I kind of get that extra memory off the bat because I've already, you know, done the thing to get their sources down. So I, I think that that's a better thing. This is three to play, obviously. Uh, and then you have your two to play mat, which is just gain the one memory. Um, so it's literally just a, you pay for two, get one, or you pay for four, get two situation. So it, I don't know. I like this one because I also get the effect of removal later. So I think that this one's kind of cemented as the good one for this deck, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but e even so, moving through, uh, randomly, you know, the Vikamon card, Arctic Blizzard, uh, choose one Digivolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon and trash it. Uh, then one of your Digimon gets uh, plus 2,000 DP for the turn. So this is the other thing I was running into with this archetype was a lot of the cards say, did you uh, take something off the bottom, off the bottom, off the bottom. And then there's the other side of the coin, which is the cards that say, hey, take it off the top, take it off the top, take it off the top. I think that's these Angemon cards. No, that's the bottom. I, I, I saw it earlier. I was looking at this for a while to make this video. <laughs> I obviously didn't do that much research. Um, but there's cards that take it off the top, and then there's cards that take it off the bottom, but not a lot of them let you choose. And so when you're running into green, and you're really trying to get away, get that um, you know Mega Kabuteri Mon that deletes the security off of there, um, and you can't get to it from the bottom in time, you know, you're trying to protect yourself a little bit. I was running into that problem. Um, and so that's another reason why I was kind of doing this research. Um, and cards like this let you choose, right? Choose a Digivolution card, uh, of one of your opponent's Digimon and then trash it. Uh, stuff like that, uh, is interesting. I ran into this and I can't think of any green Digimon to accompany this with, but it would be dope. <laughs> Uh, but Death Parade Blaster, which is that Paladramon um, card that came up came out with them, uh, trash up to two Digivolution cards from the bottom of all of your all of your opponent's Digimon. Then, if you have a green Digimon, suspend something. That's dope. Uh, but I, I can't think of a green Digimon to stick in to this Hexablaumon deck, and I think it's kind of dumb. So, I mean, if anyone has a good idea for that. Uh, a green Digimon that fits into Hexablaumon to sit there so that I can eventually play Death Parade Blaster. If you got a good idea for that, please let me know in the comments because I, I can't figure it out. Um, this card interests me. Um, I'll, I'll drag you into the depths. Uh, all of your Digimon gain when attacking an opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards, delete that Digimon for the turn. So it's like retaliation, right? Um, maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way. Um, but... Like, I, I'm fairly certain, like, you die too, correct? Like, I can't just swing with a, a, a Gomamon into a Omnimon and not die. I'm pretty sure that that's how this works. So, um, if anyone's had a good experience with this card, testing with this kind of thing, let me know. Um, I don't know if my head's in the right place with this. And this is literally why I'm making this video. Yeah, this, is, this is you watching an idiot look at, <laughs> look at a bunch of Digimon cards and try to figure out if things are good or not because his friends aren't here to tell him if he's right or not. And you're here for the ride, so you're welcome. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> um, uh, moving along, uh, there's Sorrow Blue and stuff like that, but again, some of that's not really uh, worth it. Uh, Baby-wise, you have Bukamon, which is the one we're running uh, right now. Uh, you trash at the bottom, of course, but it's only on a four or lower. Um, and then you have like the Gabumon, which is a five or lower. Uh, so they kind of like work with each other. So you, you do still remove a bunch of things. Um, but once you get to level six, again, if you're trying to get that, whatever that level five is, cause a lot of the level fives in this game, you know, kind of sets your level six to that next level. You know what I mean? You, you know, you want to be able to choose. So it, it, it's good for controlling early. If you can get a Hexablaumon out early, which by the way, um, uh, maybe bad play style or whatever, but dropping this Zudamon, 
uh, and then turning it into a Hexablaumon earlier on, and you're controlling your opponent because you've had some kind of success of removing sources, uh, felt really good. Um, you know, I, I turn one, two, two games I had tonight, uh, I didn't have any rookies, but I had this. So I was like, screw it. So I drop this, I draw my two cards next turn. One of those, probably a Hexablaumon or something I need, a rookie probably to set me up for next turn, hopefully. Um, and it, it was really cool. So uh, that was something I experienced with this deck that was pretty awesome. Uh, the Zudamon, we're running two right now. Um, when we did run it in the past, we ran two as well. So that was kind of a thing. This Piranamon, this is trashing the top. So this is what I was talking about earlier, trashing from the top. Uh, and then uh, the Angemon uh, and Magna Angemon. The Angemon is a two to evolve level four. Um, and you're trashing the bottom digivolution card of one of your opponents, but that's only when you're attacking. So your option there is, do you want to do it while you're attacking or not? Because this is basically the same thing as uh, a Paeldramon, because uh, it, it's when digivolving. So, you know, um, you kind of decide there. And also, uh, this is for one, and Paeldramon, uh, digi or I keep saying did digivolve because I play Blitzgreymon all the time, takes away two. Uh, so those are your options there. Uh, as a assisting level six right now, we're kind of playing uh, this Regulacusmon. <laughs> Bad English here, but whatever. Um, so when attacking, you trash the bottom, uh, and when you do, draw one. Um, this is what I was kind of talking about. If they if they're already like done, like I've already controlled them, good for me, right? Uh, I don't get this effect, and that bothers me. Uh, I, I want to draw one, and I I want to like. Uh, you know, really ramp up my domination of the game. If I if I am there, I don't want a dead end, uh, and I feel like I'm hitting that. I was looking at Vikemon. If this thing wasn't four to evolve, I'd be so much more excited about it. You know, I don't want to have to have a hammer spark to do this to feel better about myself. This would be cool, but I, I can't get around this four to evolve. If y'all found that this works, let me know because I would love to play Vikemon. Look at look, we're the same person. See? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, and, and that's really all I kind of found. It, th there's a lot. I don't know. This is the first archetype I really dove into. And I was like, oh, there's like options here of different things to do. Um, and I want to know your guys' opinion on it. So thanks for sticking around for this idiotic mumbling <laughs> or whatever you want to call this. Uh, I, I thought this was decent content. If not, let me know. Tell me I'm trash. Uh, cause people do that on the internet, right? Just tell people they're trash on their YouTube videos, but it's okay. Cause you're also trash. You're also trash. <laughs> I'm not good at this game. I don't know why I talk, uh, talk trash. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Welcome back to the channel again. We're kind of easing our, easing our way in here. We're building decks. We built two tonight. Uh, we're going to build a couple more. We're going to play around with all of them. Uh, so we all have a good idea so that when we actually play for you guys that it, it's reasonable play and not just uh, a bunch of, you know, bad plays because we don't know what's coming kind of deal. So um, thanks for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but there will be another one. See you all later.